Welcome to Electra Online. Now, part four is a little bit tricky. What is part four? Well, let's read it. It says three moles of a diatomic ideal gas whose molecules can vibrate is given nine kilojoules of heat and undergoes isobaric expansion. Wow, they don't tell you the initial volume, they don't tell you the final volume, they don't tell you the change in the temperature, they don't tell you what the pressure is. It almost seems like they don't give you enough information. And in addition to that, they also tell you that it's a diatomic ideal gas whose molecules can vibrate. So normally if we ignore vibration for diatomic molecules, we have the following situation. For diatomic molecules, we have C sub V is equal to 5 over 2R and C sub P is equal to 7 over 2R. Well, that's because they have diatomic molecules not only have 3 degrees of freedom of motion, they also have 2 degrees of freedom of, of uh, rotation. They can rotate in two directions. So that gives them C sub V is 5 over 2R. But now they tell us that they can also vibrate. So they have a diatomic molecule, which means it can vibrate like this, and it can vibrate like this. So that gives it two additional uh, degrees of freedom. So because of the vibration, we can then say that we're not going to use this. We're going to give it two additional degrees of freedom, which means C sub V is equal to 7 over 2R, and C sub P is equal to 9 over 2R. All right. So... Since we're looking for the change in internal energy, delta U, that is equal to N C sub V times delta T. Now they do tell us the number of moles. We now know our C sub V, but we don't know the delta T. But they do tell us that it is an adiabatic, no, not adiabatic, an isobaric process. And for an isobaric process, heat added, Q, is equal to N C sub P delta T. And we know that this is equal to 9 kilojoules. So, what we could do is we could divide one by the other to eliminate delta T. So we can write Q divided by delta U, which is equal to N C sub P delta T divided by N C sub V delta T, which is equal to 9 kilojoules over, let's call it X. So essentially what we're doing here is we're looking for X. And we can see that if we take this part of the equation, that N cancels out and delta T, uh, delta T cancels out, and we know what C sub P is, and we know that C sub V is. So in other words, X is equal to 9 kilojoules times the ratio of C sub V over C sub P, which is equal to 9 kilojoules times C sub V is 7 over 2R and C sub P is 9 over 2R. And of course, R's cancel out, over 2 cancels out, the 9's cancels out, and so you end up with 7 kilojoules. And if we take a look, that is one of the answers. It's answer Q. And then we come over here and we say, okay, we have two possibilities. We have answer A or answer C. But then in this case, you can see that answer C does indeed match all four of the answers that we got for all four parts of this particular problem. Again, after we got the answer for part one, we didn't need to go on because there was only one option that had a P. It was P, and therefore that was the answer. Move on to the next problem. But it does help to go and evaluate how to solve these types of problems just so that we can learn the techniques. Because remember, the next time we take an advanced test, all the problems will be different again, and so it's good to be able to solve the problems of the test that they have had before, just to get more practice in and have a better shot at doing well on that next test. And that is how it's done.